It's about to get even spicier in Colts land with the team's offseason beginning in just a few days. You guys gave us some burning questions that we've got answers for today on Locked on Colts. Let's get to it. You are Locked on Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you all for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. I'm Jake Arthur. He is Zach Hicks. And you know the two of us from HorseshoeHuddle.com. Uh, Today, we're taking your questions about the Indianapolis Colts. You guys gave us some good ones out there on Twitter. Man, with one game left, it is almost full systems go and home free for the offseason. We just got to hold on for this weekend. Um, Some of the the really good topics that you guys brought us questions on. uh, Who are the Colts' options truly at head coach? You know, everyone's got their wish lists, but what are kind of the, the realistic options? What might the Colts do early in the draft outside of quarterback? Because you have to expect the unexpected with this team. Even even if they do get a quarterback, they're still a second and a third round. And they got our other early picks out there to choose from. And then if all the turmoil surrounding this year, what's been some of the fallout and what's the attitude in the locker room? Which honestly, I mean, some of that stuff has come out, but I'm, I'm sure there's more we're going to learn in, in the coming months for sure. Yeah. Um, so Zach, this first one we got here on Twitter was from at C forward foot doc. He said, let's say Jim Harbaugh follows the money, meaning he goes Denver, Carolina, somewhere else. That's going to, uh, give him massive amounts of money basically. And Jim Irsay does not hire Jeff Saturday. So no Jim Harbaugh, no Jeff Saturday. What's the best realistic coaching candidate <laughs> to get excited about in the non Leslie Frazier slash Steve Wilkes category. <laughs> and they said, please tell me that the category exists. Zach, I'll open the I, floor to you because I know you love that one. I love this question so much because of all the exclusions this person had to throw in there. Okay, if we're not talking Jeff Saturday, if we're not talking Jim Harbaugh, if we're not talking Steve Wilkes, we're not talking Leslie Frazier, who, who are we going after? And I'm like, okay, I love the optimism. Let's have some fun and to talk about like yeah. plan C and plan D. <laughs> who are the three other people that are possibilities after that? <laughs> uh, but no, I love it. I love it so much. It's a great question. But yeah, no, I to, to address the Leslie Frazier, Steve Wilkes <laughs> category first, I think those are the most just like absolute safe options. Like I fully believe Leslie Frazier could come in and he could build a pretty solid staff and bring a lot of that Buffalo Bills culture over to Indy and do some decent things. Like, I'm not saying he's the guy who's going to get Indy to the Super Bowl and win a bunch of championships, but I think he can he can kind of right the ship a little bit. Uh, and Steve Wilkes is the way. We saw Steve Wilkes there in Carolina, took over an absolute dumpster fire and got them in playoff contention until this recent weekend against the Buccaneers. So I do think those are very, very safe, like high floor options, low ceiling type options that coach. Uh, but you you did throw a couple guys down there. I do think Ben Johnson from Detroit is going to get a lot of good looks. And honestly, throw another Detroit guy out there, Deuce Staley, their their assistant head coach slash running backs coach. Uh, if the Colts really want a rah rah type guy at head coach, uh, Deuce Staley is every bit Dan Campbell without being Dan Campbell. Uh, I think that he could do uh, some good things. But yeah, some other guys across the league that I think are going to be very very popular in every coaching cycle, especially in this one. Kellen Moore in Dallas, uh, Shane Waldron in Seattle. Those are very popular ones. Uh, Obviously, D'Amico Ryans in San Fran is going to be huge for everybody. We'll see if Indy can get in on that. But, uh, well, yeah, I'm not too sure that they'll be able to get into that. And then Gerard Mayo from from New England is another super, super popular one that's that's picking up some steam. So there is a, you know, plan D and plan E and plan F. You know, there are guys down there. But I would say the the smart money would probably be on like a, a Jim Harbaugh or Jeff Saturday or and then, you know, that next category of uh, Steve Wilkes, Leslie Frazier, maybe Lovey Smith if he gets fired because of his connections to to Chris Ballard. But 
there are some good options across the league for sure. Yeah, taking all those exclusions into account, <laughs> you, you obviously named off some some good ones. Um, Aaron Glenn, the, the defensive coordinator from the Lions, if we're looking at yet another Lions uh, connection there. But a couple from the opponent that just whooped the Colts, uh, you've got offensive coordinator Mike Kafka, Giants, uh, and then Wink Martindale is a name I hadn't really heard about until lately. I was reading something on The Athletic, and I guess he's probably going to receive more head coach consideration than we thought. He kind of seemed like one of those, you know, old timers who was content being a, a coordinator. Uh, but no, he's a, a great coordinator, a uh, long time with the Ravens. Um, his fingerprints are all over that identity from the, the 2000s and things. Um, so those are some some interesting options as well. If you're looking for someone that like, it, so Zach Kiefer put out a piece earlier today, um, kind of a big look behind the curtains. Uh, it looks like Jim Mercer definitely wants someone who's kind of fiery, going to hold guys accountable. Uh, a lot of those guys that Zach and I just mentioned fit that bill. And, you know, with Jim Mercer saying, he kind of alluded to, they're, they're going to look into some candidates that a lot of people weren't thinking about and, and stuff like that. So I think Martindale is an option. Matt Campbell from Iowa State, the head coach. That's one of my nightmare scenarios, I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> Just because, like, he, the the college head coaches don't often work out, and it's like you're, he's not he's not even like one of the top ones that people are going for. It's just like a random connection with the Colts. So, yeah. He, my uh, my last thing I'll say on this is if you know we take Jim or say it is word through Kiefer's article and through other comments he said where it's gonna be you know expanding that search search to guys we don't think, and then in Zach Kiefer's article where it's like we're gonna be looking at. Um, fiery type guys and guys who can motivate a locker room or guys who are like Jeff Saturday, where it's going to be like calling out that offensive line on day one and being like, your standard is not good enough right now. Uh, I really, really hope they look at Deuce Staley. I, I might be the only person in all of Colts nation that could get excited about Deuce Staley. Uh, but when I look at what they've done with that run game there in, in Detroit, when I look at his past with Philadelphia and how much they valued him there in Philly. And I look at, again, if you like the Dan Campbell type of head coach, that's what Deuce Staley is, except he also brings that added addition to uh, drawing up a really genius run game. So I'm not saying he's my top option, but if you're going to go with the fiery rah-rah type guy and you're going to go that route already, give me Deuce Staley, man. I'd, I'd have a blast with Deuce Staley as head coach. Dude, I'm right there with you. He's basically, he gives you some of those same attributes as Jeff Saturday, but with coaching experience, which <laughs> yes. is always a plus. I don't want to be too picky, but I would love for it to be someone who's coached before. <laughs> uh, our next one is from at run TMC three one seven. If Jim Ursay seriously hires Jeff Saturday as the full time head coach, God help us all. In parentheses, uh, how many years will that set the franchise back from returning to contention? So, with my answer, I'll be a little more on the optimistic side, just because we don't totally know. It's been all bad so far for the most part. Um, but I'm going to say it kind of depends on what else they do outside of that. They have to get this quarterback figured out because, you know, if if they just do the same thing they've been doing, that's obviously going to be awful. We've seen those results. Uh, Saturday's been in over his head, no doubt. But what does his team look like with a full offseason to prepare and do things the way he wants to do it? What's the staff look like? Um is he going to bring in a bunch of other guys without experience, though? That's something you got to kind of be scared of as well. <laughs> Dan Orlovsky um, that, is offensive coordinator. <laughs> right? I was literally thinking that in my head. But, like, <laughs> oh, uh, but no, it's – I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say, like, this may not look like at all what a team that he puts together would look like because he literally was thrown into it in the middle of the season with a few days to prepare. So I don't think it can be as bad as it has been, but I'm, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. What do you think? Uh, to, to kind of cut down on time and not go too long on this. Let's just say they keep him and he's as bad as we expect next season. Uh, being in great position to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. to go along with their CJ Stroud or their Will Levis or their Bryce Young that they take this year. So, I mean, I don't know how much it would really set this organization back because you just get a, a huge playmaker or you're even in position to draft Caleb Williams, who might be 
the cleanest prospect since Andrew Luck or something, you know, which we'll see thrown out there quite a bit. Uh, so I don't know how much it really set. I, you know, I'm not saying like Jeff Saturday is one year of a head coach would set this program or this uh, organization back like 30 years or something. Like they're not going to turn into the Washington commanders or Detroit lions uh, with that. But uh, yeah, I do think it would be a bad hire. Uh, no doubt about it. I think the only ways that he can kind of work is if he spends all off season preparing for it and actually getting acclimated to being a head coach, he absolutely lay, like just absolutely nails that offensive coordinator hire. And then they draft a quarter uh, quarterback who is really can't miss. I don't really think there's that guy in this class, but you know, players can surprise us once they get to the league. Look at Justin Herbert. Nobody really expected him to be as elite as he is. The second he stepped on a, on a football field though, he became the, this can't miss quarterback that can do no wrong. Uh, you know, that could be somebody in this class too. So a lot of things have to go right for Jeff Saturday to be a successful NFL head coach. I would love him back as an offensive line coach. I, I really think he'd be a great offensive line coach or, or maybe something in the front office. But yeah, I, I think the comment was great in saying, God help us if he's the, <laughs> if he's the head coach next season. I'd rather go, I'd rather even go into that Leslie Frazier or Steve Wilkes tier category from the previous comment. Yeah, I'd love for him to get a little more experience first before being handed the reins once again. Uh, we may all not be able to choose the Colts' next head coach or quarterback, but you guys can pick which players that you want to ride with over at Prize Picks. Either on their mobile app or online, just pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their strat stat projections, which always trips me up, then you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you can watch, including NFL, NBA, MLB, eSports, NASCAR, really anything. Uh, entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Withdrawals are safe and fast as well, and Prize Picks is now operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKED ON. That means if you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, they'll give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, so this next section were questions that you guys asked us about non quarterback draft picks. Obviously, we've touched on quarterback stuff a lot lately, including your uh, the fan question shows. Uh, the first one from at toad underscore numb, which I really <laughs> like that name. It's a great name. And what, <laughs> right? Uh, in what scenario do the Colts not draft a quarterback with their first draft pick? No, and no. honestly, I th no, you don't. But think of no. who's doing the picking here, though. I mean, Absolutely I know they, none. I know they have to. No, but I <laughs> you just don't think there's any way. No, no, right. I, I refuse. I refuse, Jake. There, no, <laughs> no, you're not. If you lower your opportunity. If you lower your expectations, you're less likely to be hurt. I've learned that in my life. It's probably <laughs> something I should work out in therapy a bit. No, you so can work I, that I think, out with better help. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to transition yeah. into one here. Yeah, but that'd be great. No, Jake, like, <laughs> how long has it been? Like, it's been what, since Andrew Luck? That or I guess technically with Quentin Nelson year, they had a top five pick, but they traded out of that. Yeah, they were but at three, like, they went back to six, yeah. Right, but let's talk about how rare it is to have a top five pick and not have a back already on your roster. It is so hard to get to the position they are at right now. Teams trade millions of draft picks to get up to this position. We have seen it constantly. The Washington uh, Commanders now, but obviously they're a different name back then. Washington Commanders back in 2012, the first round pick to move up to take RG3 right behind Andrew Luck. You know, teams killed to be in the situation that the Colts are going to be in, especially when you have four quarterbacks that are going to be worth taking in the first round in this class. Three that are probably going to go in the top 10, and Will Levis, CJ Stroud, and, and uh, Bryce Young. So, no, absolutely not. Do not do not take something else with this pick and then mortgage all these future picks to go back up and get a quarterback or just skip quarterback overall. There is... There's zero, like, there's zero scenarios in my mind where they don't take, even if the top four quarterbacks all go with the first four picks right in front of them, still just force a quarterback at five because, like, they, they need to come out of this class with a young quarterback. I don't care which one, 
any of the top four guys I'm fine with move up. If you have to, I don't care. There's no scenario where I'm going to be okay. And I really feel like I'm speaking for a lot of Colts fans here. You are, you could be taking Will Anderson who might be Von Miller or Khalil Mack in the NFL. Like this might be legit. Like one of the best pass surgeons in football in two years. And I would still be pissed if they passed on one of these quarterbacks to take him because you need a quarterback. I cannot do another season with Matt Ryan or or Jared Goff or Derek Carr or any of these guys. Give me a young quarterback, and they have they have the the ability to take one this year. Do not pass a quarterback. Absolutely not. <laughs> You're going to be even more mad when they take an edge rusher and it's not one of and they take Miles Murphy at five or something. <laughs> Oh my god. What I'm what I'm afraid of is being there in the media room. They have an early pick. We have to wait, you know, they make their pick and then we have to wait three, four more hours to talk to the guys at the end of the night. And we have to stew on that. Just hours of people berating our mentions with what the hell are they doing? But I'm telling you, man, like, like, th- like this group this group, we've learned to expect those kind of what are no. you doing? Not no, in the draft necessarily. I can't. I can't, man. There's no way. I can't. I can't even like even with Chris Ballard, who likes to, you know, he, he's actually gotten better in recent years. He's taken more mm-hmm. prime position. You know, he's, he took a, a defensive end in Quiddy Pay high. He took a cornerback high in Rock Yassid. Like he's actually doing better at taking valuable positions early. Wide receiver this past year, that high second round or mid second round pick. Um, I, I just can't see it. I really can't see it not being a quarterback. Like even even if it is a guy who so many people are torn on right now and Will Levis from Kentucky, even if it's Will Levis at pick five or six, I can talk myself into that more than Will Anderson. Even, even though I think Will Anderson is a more of a surefire hit, I can talk myself way into Will Levis more than Will Anderson. I, I just can't talk myself into anything but quarterback with the top five pick. Hey, I get it. I I do not think any of us will survive the night otherwise. Uh, but something more realistic, let's say they get there, and this one's from at K Smith 1872. Uh says a quarterback in round one seems like a lock, just not sure who. What positions do they target in rounds two and three to provide the greatest impact to the team? Now, obviously, after they get their quarterback, it's gonna be best player available. They're not they're probably yeah. not gonna um and honestly, like you know a lot more than I do. You're ahead of, of me by leaps and bounds right now. What are some of the rich positions on day two right now that they might look to go for? Yeah, so one thing I'll say real quick is this team, I think across the board, yes, there are some needs across the board. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this team is close to contention when they're about to finish the season with three, four, or with four or five wins this season. So obviously there's a lot of needs, but I really don't think they're in a position where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, this one position is so terrible that we need to take it with our round two pick. I think that there are enough, like everything's kind of like a soft need right now. There's no hard needs across the board. Uh, So yeah, I think whatever is the best case scenario or best position available, Uh, but from everything I've seen so far, I think cornerback is going to be pretty strong in season and in round two, I think offensive line is going to be really strong. Uh, I actually think this offensive line class doesn't really offer much in terms of first round prospects. But I think once you get into that round two, you're going to get a ton of like really, really interesting prospects. Um, I really like uh, Tyler Steen from Alabama at left tackle. I really like Wanya Morris from Oklahoma at right tackle. Uh, John John Michael Schmitz, I think is his name, center from so, from Minnesota, That's is a guy a, I really like. You're telling me John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt <laughs> is going to be a Colt. I'm pretty sure it's John Michael Schmitz, but I haven't looked at his film or his name in a long time. That's just I've, the guy I remember pr- liking last year. <laughs> so, I pray that that is their second round pick now. Yeah, I want yeah, he bad. he's awesome. He, he's really really good. So I think there's a, I think there's a lot of offensive line depth in round two. And even though with the with the development of Bernard Ryman, left tackle might not be the biggest need right now. I still think they could bolster center or right guard through the draft, or maybe even grab a swing tackle in case Ryman you know, has a bad off season or something like that. So I think, yeah, offensive line, cornerback, uh, pass rusher, those, this looks like a really good pass rusher class. Uh, I think there's a lot of options they could go, but again, I kind of see the whole roster outside of quarterback as a soft need. Like there's soft needs everywhere. They could go wide receiver, even though it's not the greatest wide receiver class, they could stand to grab another tight end. They could stand to grab an offensive lineman, defensive line, even linebacker, maybe, you know, Shaquille Leonard up in the air, Bobby O'Carrick might leave in free agency, 
uh, cornerback, safety. Like there are so many positions that this team could could grab that I wouldn't kind of pigeonhole them into saying like, oh yeah, they're gonna take this or they should take this. I, I just think there's a lot of soft needs across the board for this team. Yeah, I honestly, I I think everything's on the table. The only positions I wouldn't see them going in round two, obviously quarterback, running back. Uh, the values yeah. is probably not there. And if they intend to keep Taylor, obviously, and then special teams, otherwise everything else is, should be available. Cause you have free agency coming up, you know, Michael Pittman, he's going to be a free agent after the year, right? You might cut Mo Alley, uh, cut Mo Alley Cox at tight end. There's just a, a lot of things you wouldn't think of really are options. Right. Absolutely. Guys. And before we move on, we want to tell you about our friends over at bet online which is your number one source for sports betting info stats news and analysis get the latest odds and trends for every professional amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and even the world cup i know that happened already but you know you guys can you know you guys can bet on it in the next couple years you know whatever comes back we've got it all here at betonline.net if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to go about your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, Jake. So are we doing if, then, or or whatever, like the if for them or like the rather questions? Are we going to have some player turnover questions here? No, this is player turnover this week. We're, we're going to save okay, okay. our... Uh... Are rather than or whatever yeah. our FMK our FMK for next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, yes. the the first one we've got a lot of people wanted to ask about like current Colts player turnover, kind of related to some of the turmoil that's been going on this year. Uh, first up is at Matt Roberts Real. He said, "I feel like the Colts should trade Michael Pittman Jr. I'm not certain he would want to be extended after his comments in the off season about being disappointed with a new quarterback every year." If they did, what would be a realistic return? I'd be happy with a second rounder, TBH. I think that would be right. Um, I don't. I, I don't think a team would go for a first rounder for Pittman, but I don't think the Colts would accept anything worse than a second. I think that's especially when you look at the landscape of the NFL and who's been traded for what. Uh, Pittman's a really good wide receiver. He's going to be a hundred catch guy probably, but he's not like he's not a can't miss wide receiver. He'd be an awesome wide receiver too. And as we've seen, you know, a startable wide receiver one. Uh, that's that's what I would do. And I, w- I wouldn't be shocked if he's traded either. I'm, I'm not forecasting that by any means. But he is a free agent after the year. These wide receivers are getting really expensive. If Alec Pierce starts really coming on, you just don't know what the future holds. And if, if he's disgruntled about quarterback stuff, you know, you never know who wants what. I think that's going to be such a tricky situation because we've seen wide receivers who are clearly better than him get traded for first round picks in recent off seasons. You know, obviously Tyreek Hill was traded for a first rounder, but AJ Brown, who I think was the, cl- the draft class right before him, was traded for a first round pick. Similar situation to him being an early second round pick himself and got traded for a pick in the twenties. But I think we can all kind of safely say that A.J. Brown, even before this this explosion this season, was a better wide receiver than Michael Pittman Jr. And and I, I think this season was kind of a – it was a tough one for Pittman Jr. because last year we were going off that high of, yes, he had that second-year breakout under a quarterback that we all kind of agree is not the greatest. You know, Carson Wentz is getting benched for his second time in Washington this season. And Michael Pittman Jr. still looked like a legit wide receiver one with all that turmoil last season with Carson Wentz and that offense. Come to this season, there's even more turmoil with Matt Ryan in this offense and multiple other quarterbacks. Uh, but Michael Pittman Jr. still didn't take that positive step we expected. You know, the drops came in quite a bit. Uh, the separation was down. It seemed like he wasn't getting open at times. There were some of the comments, like this guy said, uh, about you know frustration and stuff in the locker room. So. Yeah, it's a tough one. I I really think like I don't think he's going to be worth a first round pick. I don't think teams are going to trade a first round pick for him. Uh, but maybe a second and some change, like a little bit of change, because we we're talking about a thousand yard receiver, a guy who's really close to being a thousand yard receiver for two years in a row on his rookie contract. Uh, that's going to be a really tough situation because personally, I I probably rather take the second and some change 
then pay him 15, 16, 17 million dollars a year. And I think Michael Pittman Jr. is an outstanding receiver. I think he's going to be a high end wide receiver two or low end wide receiver one across the league for many, many years. But again, is that worth that much of the salary cap that's going to that's going to take to, to keep him? The Colts are going to be in for a tough one with that one. Uh, I don't know what the right answer is. It's hard to trade a player of that caliber. But again, the, the money is going to be tough for a player like that, especially when you're already paying your offensive line so much. You're paying your linebacker on the other side so much. You're paying your quarterback so much in dead money <laughs> this next season. Uh, it, it's going to be tough to, to kind of talk yourself into that Pittman deal. But I, I hope, like, honestly, again, all things perfect. I hope he comes back next year with C.J. Stroud or Will Levis or whatever and puts up 1,500 yards, and then we don't even have any concerns about him in, in 20 million a year. But uh, yeah, as, of, as it stands right now, I think that's going to be an extremely difficult conversation for the Colts. And yeah, if you get the right deal, if some team, for whatever reason, is offering you a first-round pick for him, heck, I take it. <laughs> that works for me. Yeah, I mean, there's teams like the, the Packers and Ravens that always seem to be looking for receivers. Um, I just had another one in my head, but of course I can't think of it now. Uh, but no, there, there's always going to be teams willing to pay good money for receivers of his caliber. Oh, it was uh, the Chiefs. If Juju Smith, Schuster walks, Michael Pittman is not too dissimilar to that. That'd be uh, interesting. Moving, yeah, right? that'd be uh, really that'd be, interesting. I think a team with a really good quarterback could see themselves wanting to get Pittman and be like, "This is all this kid needs is a is an awesome quarterback." I, I would honestly love him in Baltimore, though. If Lamar Jackson mm-hmm. stays there, just just RPO slants all game long. He'd be amazing in that role. Saw like that he'd be twenty one. Yeah, yeah, he'd be so good there. So yeah, I, it's gonna be tough. I, I would rather keep Pittman Jr. and I hope he takes a huge step next year. But whatever the Colts end up doing with that, I, it's probably gonna be the right call. Yeah. Next one from at Jr. One one six four eight one six one. Jr. Lots of numbers. Uh, <laughs> if we can only keep one player, who would you rather resign? Yannick Ngakwe or Bobby Okereke? And throw just disregarding hypotheticals for all everything at face value right now. I think you gotta say Ngakwe just because you don't want to be paying two linebackers a combined like thirty five million dollars per year. That's the only reason why you don't know what's going to happen with Shaquille Leonard. I would love to have Okereke, and as a player, I think I would rather have Okereke than Ngakwe. But that's just a ton of money to sink into your linebacker group. Yeah, it is. And you know Ngakwe is going to get you eight sacks. And if a new defensive coordinator comes in, maybe they would be willing to make him more of a rotational edge and not an every down player. No, I can't. I can't. I have to say Bobby O here. I have to say Bobby O'Karrake here. Like Bobby O'Karrake is just the better player at what he does at this point. Like, don't get me wrong. Yak Ngakwe gets those sack numbers. He gets them no matter how many times. If you unblock him 12 times in a season, he's going to get 12 sacks. Like, if, <laughs> it could be, right. they could be on run plays, and he'll somehow turn them into sacks. He's amazing at just getting to those sack numbers every year. But Bobby Okereke is a high-level coverage linebacker. He gets after in the run game. Um, he's developed a bit of a punch-out this season in terms of forcing fumbles. I really think every team ends up paying him this season, if it's the Colts or someone else, they're going to be super happy with that deal. You know, I honestly, I really think the best place for him, and I would absolutely love it just as a fan of football, if he somehow found his way to Philly uh, with that scheme, because that's really the missing piece they need on that defense. Oh my gosh, that'd be so much fun to watch. But I really think, you know, like, like uh, Chicago is probably the best, is probably the place he's going to end up. But yeah, Bobby O'Kara getting is just a higher level player at what he's asked to do. So I would go with Bobby Okereke, but I understand the Yannick Ngakwe stuff, you know, pass rusher who gets sacks. It's hard to say no to that. And the Colts are already paying so much to an inside linebacker, but ah, man, it's going to hurt if Bobby Okereke leaves this offseason. He's so good. He's so, so good at what he does. And I I would, I, I can't do it. I'd have to say I'd rather have him in this scenario. Yeah, that's why I don't get paid the big bucks to be a GM. Because I will mention on Ultimate Football GM, I did get fired as GM. I will, I will say that. I started playing. I got on a roll. I guaranteed a Super Bowl, and it did not work out. And I was dismissed and relieved of my duties. So, so tread lightly when you play Ultimate Football GM, or you might get canned. 
<laughs> Look at us throwing in some other ads without even having to in this episode. Yeah, that's a that's a twofer. Real quick, this last <laughs> one, uh, and we we won't divulge much into it. But at Real Robin J, heard rumors about players wanting to get trades. Any names? Any names? No, we're not. We won't do that. But I will no. say the Colts really need to be careful about how they approach this off season, and. <sighs> You know, you don't want to ruffle any more feathers in that locker room of important players because, I mean, look what it's cost you so far this year. And, there, I mean, there's plenty of players who have had frustrating moments that haven't asked to get out or anything like that. I just think they're on shaky ground and they're going to really have to tread lightly. Yeah, but again, without going too much into detail, the couple things I'll say here is, is, look, these guys are professionals. Like, it takes a lot for guys to request trades or be so unhappy that they want out to where they're going to get traded to another situation that they're not familiar with, you know, or, or a different city where they have to move their kids and their families to. That's just a tough thing for anybody. So no matter, no matter how unhappy you are at your job, it's hard to relocate and, and request a relocation. Uh, but what I will say is uh, in terms of some rumors about players wanting out of India or wanting trades, uh, there have been some practice squad guys and bottom of the roster guys that have wanted out in recent weeks. And some of them have been granted. That's the most I will say. Uh, some of them have been granted. These guys are now in other opportunities in other areas uh, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, they just want to attach to a different team before the end of the season. So they have a hope of making that roster next year. Uh, but outside of that, you know, I'm I'm not too sure about specific guys. The one thing I will say, though, is Jim Irsay has to be really careful about continually dragging Frank Reich's name through the mud this off season. Like just don't do what you did with Carson Wentz last year. Cause don't get me wrong. Carson Wentz, it's easier to drag his name through the mud because it's been done before. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have that many fans across the league, but Frank Reich is a guy who's so well respected, not only league wide, but also in this locker room, even though it was time for a change. And I do agree that it was time for the Colts to move on. There are a lot of people in that locker room, uh, some guys who are going to be free agents this upcoming season or you know, towards the end of their deals who love Frank Reich as a person and think Frank Reich is a great dude. Uh, and just even mm-hmm. though it didn't work out as a coach, they think he's just a phenomenal person. If you keep going on this war path against Frank Reich in interviews and saying, like, I reluctantly gave him an extension and, and I hope this would turn it around for him and stuff like that, you're going to really alienate that locker room. Like just, just say it was time for us to move on. And that's why we did it. Like, that's all you have to say. Don't go any further into that. Don't be like, Oh, he forced me to take Carson Wentz and I hated him for it. Just be quiet about this stuff. Like just leave that in, in your brain. You know, it it gets you nowhere to, to sling mud and everything like that. It doesn't make people want to join that party. Right. Right. So I'm just saying, I don't know how alienated the locker room is right now, but uh, be careful with that because that is something that could alienate this locker room quite a bit. Even if, again, the players all agree that it was time to move on from Frank Reich, they still love him as a human being. I still love him as a human being. People across the league still love him as a human being. Be careful going on the war path against Frank Reich. Yeah, I mean, the season's not over. He's not in a new place yet. But so far, he's the one that kind of looks like he's coming out on top of this situation. Right. Um, and with that said, that is it for us. There's a game to play on Sunday against the Texans, and we'll bring you guys instant coverage of that after the game. Again, it's almost over, guys. And then it is full off-season mode. Yep. Make sure you guys are following us on social media at Locked On Colts, at Jake Arthur NFL, and at Zach Hicks 2 on Twitter. Also, subscribe to the Locked On Colts podcast on YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcast. We did just hit over 2,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. We appreciate you guys. Now, let's go to 3,000. Let's go to 3,000. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, we'd also love your guys' ratings and reviews whenever you have a chance. And thank you for making us your first listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On NFL podcast. Bring you the local insights that you love to the national spotlight with daily conversations on the NFL stores. Locked On NFL, available on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you guys on Sunday.